Farnham Castle was one of the residences of the wealthy Bishops of Winchester. In an unusual design, a shell keep encircles the mot of an earlier castle, about 1138 AD. For hundreds of years, the manor of Farnham belonged to the wealthy and powerful Bishops of Winchester. Farnham Castle served as stronghold, home and administrative centre. In about 1138 AD, a Norman Bishop, Henry of Blois, built a castle here. Farnham provided a convenient place to break the frequently made journey between Winchester and London. A tower surrounded by an earth mound or mot overlooking a courtyard stood within a ditch and bank. This early tower did not last long, probably pulled down in 1155 on the orders of King Henry II, 1154 to 1189. By the early 13th century, a stone wall with five towers a shell keep enclosed the mound. This mound still contains the massive foundations of the original Norman tower with a well below. In 1216, Prince Louis of France invaded England at the invitation of barons rebelling against King John. French soldiers captured several castles, including Farnham, which they held for 10 months. The Shell Keep was last used as a defensive structure during the Civil War between King Charles I and Parliament. Farnham Castle blocked the route from the King's western strongholds to the south and southeast, making it strategically important. During the war, Parliament held the castle for all but a few days. In 1648, they ordered it demolished so that it could play no further part in the war. After the return of the monarchy in 1660, Bishop Morley restored the Bishop's Palace but left the keep in ruins. On top of the mound where soldiers once stood guard, the bishops planted an orchard and a garden. In the Middle Ages, a deep pit blocked the way to the gatehouse. A drawbridge spanned the gap. In front of us is an outline where it has been filled in. While the bishop's palace provided luxurious accommodation, the keep offered a fortified refuge for troubled times the bishop could flee directly across the drawbridge from his private chamber. A wooden staircase from ground level allowed castle servants access. When trouble seemed likely, the castle constable replenished the keep's storerooms with arms and supplies. Bishop Gervais's accounts of 1264-65 recalled three men carrying carcasses of 40 pigs up to the keep because of the war between Simon de Montfort and Henry III, everything had to be carried up to and over the drawbridge. The builders of Farnham Castle considered its defence carefully. A deep drawbridge pit once stood beneath our feet. Above the gatehouse passage a room housed the mechanisms to raise and lower the drawbridge and portcullis. The blocked door above the entry arch probably led out onto a wooden platform Men operated the drawbridge from here or kept lookout. On the right, an arrow slit guards the gate approach. The portcullis, a heavy grating of iron or wood, came down through a slot still visible under the arch. Just inside on the left are two holes that held draw bars used to lock shut a thick wooden door. If attackers gained access to the passage, defenders could then drop missiles on them through a murder hole in the arch roof. Of the keep's five towers, the gatehouse is the only one where we can still see their original height. In the 1250s, Bishop Fox added another level. If we look up, you can see the additional Tudor brickwork. We're currently standing beside the foundations of the original Norman Square Keep, built here in about 1138. In the 1950s, restoration work on the Shell Keep unearthed remains of doorways and rooms in two of the turrets. Archaeologists dug a trench across the middle of the keep to investigate what else might lie beneath the surface. In the centre, 
they unexpectedly uncovered a massive stone structure. The builders of the first tower began constructing its walls far below where we are standing. They built a mot of compacted clay, chalk and other minerals around the sides. This unusual design may have been to protect the tower base from attack by mining or battering ram. The height of the finished tower is unknown. The size of the base suggests a set of single rooms, one above the other, perhaps three or four storeys tall. The entrance to such early Norman towers usually stood at first floor level with an external wooden stair. Castles needed a water supply easily to hand, crucial when under siege. A well shaft extended below the tower. Sometime during the 16th century, a Tudor bishop had it filled in. The first tower may have stood for fewer than 20 years. At the start of his reign, Henry II ordered the destruction of many castles, including several belonging to Bishop Henry of Bois. This would have been hard work done by hand with pickaxes and fire. These foundations of an earlier square keep had walls nearly 3 metres or 10 feet thick. The space would have been divided into rooms, probably for storage. The top of a well lies at the very bottom. During their investigation, archaeologists discovered a stone flange or ledge just below the ground surface. This might have provided extra support for a larger tower above ground level. Archaeologists dug the small pit near the stairs to investigate the flange and its relationship to the tower walls. After Henry II had the first castle tower demolished, work began on a much larger structure. Records do not tell us who ordered the construction of this new keep or when building began, but it existed when Bishop Peter de Roches wrote his accounts in 1208. Unusually the builders constructed the new walls around the mound, not on top. At first the gap bridged by wooden walkways existed where the sides of the original mound curved away from the walls. Later, filling in this space created a flat inner courtyard, providing more room for men and supplies. In the 13th century, the keep contained only the essentials for a small garrison, soldiers' lodgings, the well, and rooms for weapons and stores. During the next century, the building activity greatly increased. Almost every one of the buildings in the bishop's palace had its counterpart in the keep, from chapel to kitchen. During the Civil War, Farnham Castle's position made it strategically important. It stood between King Charles I in the west and his royalist supporters in Kent. It also guarded routes to gunpowder production and iron founding centres in the south and southeast. In October 1642, Parliament sent a garrison to Farnham. The next month, with reports of a Royalist advance into Surrey, the garrison retreated. Royalists occupied the castle a few days later. Dragoons, under the command of Colonel Sir William Waller, stormed and retook the castle at the end of November. Late in 1643, Royalist troops massed in the north of Farnham Park. The enemy appeared in a great body upon a hill in the heath above the park, about a mile from us. Our ordnance made divers shot at them. 
both from the castle and out in the park. Waller refused to be drawn from his defensive position around the castle and the Royalists withdrew. They made one more unsuccessful raid in January 1645. On the 4th of July 1648, the House of Commons ordered such effectual course with Farnham Castle as to put it in that condition of indefensibleness, as it may be no occasion for the endangering of the peace of that county. The keep never again served a defensive purpose.